Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Modern Warfare 3. Hopefully you all had a very safe and Merry Christmas. I did. It was very nice to see friends and family. Definitely a pretty good time. But now that we're getting back into the swing of things here as we get ready for the new year, I saw a tweet today and it just kind of like, we're going into a weird time as COD fans because Bobby Kotek is on his way out the door, which I will be doing a full dedicated video to that. But also Microsoft is going to be completely taking over and then we're going to be getting into the full year of Modern Warfare 3. But as we all know, like right now, Modern Warfare 3 is not doing so well, which actually scares me. Genuinely, it does. So we've all heard that Modern Warfare 3's sales figures have not been that good, down 38% in the UK. They were down a bit here in the United States as well. In fact, it was one of three times ever where Call of Duty was not the best selling game in the United States. I mean, obviously, it's still a juggernaut. Everything here is still relative. I mean, COD is massive, but it's very clear that the numbers that Activision are hitting are not the numbers that they were projecting. And I'm worried about that because a lot of good things have happened with Modern Warfare 3 in terms of updating the movement, bringing back Dead Silence as a perk, all the little mini events that they're doing, of course, the working mini map, like all these things that we've been asking for for a number of years were added into Modern Warfare 3, yet Modern Warfare 3's sales are not reflecting all the good things that happened with the game. And that has me concerned because what if they decide to themselves, you know what, we made all these changes based on player feedback and we're making less money. So we're just gonna go ahead and revert those changes and go back to the whole Infinity Ward style of things because they were making more money under the Infinity Ward system. That is something I'm genuinely concerned about. But then I saw this tweet today from Charlie Intel saying, anyone else notice how Activision seems to be slowly increasing the price of bundles to see how high they can go in Call of Duty? We start off with 1,800 COD points for a majority of bundles, then 2,400 COD points, and now there's 2,800 COD point bundles in the shop. And I'm somebody, you guys know, I don't buy stuff from the shop. I, I never do. I think the last time I bought something from the shop was actually back in Modern Warfare 2019. They did that collaboration with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the idea being I would get the Leatherface skin and then use it in Warzone because back then we assumed that Warzone was just going to be Warzone and it was going to be continuously updated and therefore skins you bought in 2019 would still be relevant in 2023. Well, turns out that wasn't the case. So that was the one skin I've ever bought. You guys know I don't really buy stuff from the COD shop. I like to play the game. I like to earn things from the game, right? But looking back here, it does seem like they're hiking up the prices of these bundles within the Modern Warfare 3 shop, especially when you compare them to games that came out just a couple of years ago. I mean, this is a bit further back, but I jumped on a couple of games here. I mean, checking out Black Ops 4, I mean, the game didn't really have too many bundles. It was more of a supply drop game, but back in that game, $8 got you like a galaxy skin, man. You had freaking like Dark Matter on your character. You're like a Dark Matter superhero or some shit, and that was 800 COD points. You then jump into a game like Black Ops Cold War, and again, I don't buy stuff from the shop, but this looks like a pretty wild bundle. 2,400 COD points. We're going to assume that 100 COD points equals one American dollar. So $24 here, you get an ultra skin, which actually looks pretty cool. It looks like something out of like an old B horror movie or something like that, to be honest. I mean, it's not the best looking skin in the world. It might be my graphics settings. It might be the skin. I'm not entirely sure. But on top of the ultra skin, you then get three weapons that all have tracers to them. And one of the weapons also evolves over time. It's a reaction weapon. So every three kills or so, your weapon changes and starts to look different. Then on top of that, you get a really cool finishing move, a watch, some weapon XP, a calling card, an emblem, and a charm, I mean, those are pretty basic, but like a lot of stuff comparatively for $24 right there. Then we compare that to one of the more recent bundles here within Modern Warfare 3. Here we have a $28 bundle. And again, it's an ultra skin and you can argue one way or the other. I do think this skin does look better than the other one. That's all subjective. I think the Modern Warfare 3 one here is pretty freaking cool looking. But other than that, like the two weapons that come with it don't even have, there's nothing reactive about them. There's no tracers, there's no nothing. So, you know, for $28, you get these three things versus $24 where you get all these things just a couple of years ago and not to mention that $28 skin that we have here in Modern Warfare 3 well that's basically just a remake of a skin that they had back in Black Ops Cold War which was $2,400 it gave you basically the same skin and it gave you even more weapon blueprints and a watch so it just seems like you're getting a lot less value for your bundles currently here with Modern Warfare 3 and that could be due to a number of factors number A it could be Activision losing a bunch of money by not making as many sales this year with Modern Warfare 3. I mean, again, it's all relative. They made a ton of money, but they definitely aren't making the money they were projecting to make because they are they expect to you know rise every year. They expect to break new ground every year, but instead, this year's game is selling worse on all accounts than the game that came out before. It makes it seem like Call of Duty's on the downtrend, and as such, they're probably going to try to recoup that money by making the stuff in the shop more expensive. But number B, I mean, you might be looking at something like inflation, and I've, I've argued with myself back 
and forth in my head about this. Like, dude, it's it's video games, right? How can video games really be affected by inflation that much? Like, oh, you know, it, it costs way more to be able to make a bundle here in 2023 than it did back in 2020, which that may actually be true. I don't know what they do on the inside there, what they're paying their employees or anything like that. But regardless, like, it definitely does seem like they are trying to nickel and dime their player base a bit more with this year's game than they did in previous years solely for the fact that the bundles themselves are getting pricier and pricier. And then when you compare that to the fact that Modern Warfare 3 is not selling so well, I think it's safe to say that Activision is a bit worried about Modern Warfare 3, and that makes me worried because we've seen Activision before, man. We've seen all the COD devs and stuff like that. Like, there'll be a problem with the game. You know, let's just take a random example here, right? There's going to be like, you know, just picture the MCW assault rifle, right? I mean, the gun is really, really good. It's like the only gun anyone ever uses in like competitive or even search and destroy or whatever. I actually don't know too much about competitive, but especially in search, it's like the only gun you ever see. It's just the MCW is like the god gun, it seems like right now, since they nerfed the burst rifles. Well, we may be saying to the devs like, oh man, like this god gun is kind of ridiculous. Maybe if they were to nerf it a little bit or buff up some of the other guns and they're going to be like, okay, well, we fixed the MCW, guys. We, uh, we, we, we adjusted its idle sway and we slightly reduced its sprint out time. There, problem solved. It's like, what? That doesn't fix the problem that the gun has like no recoil and kind of hits like a truck and it's very, very easy to use. Like they'll fix the non-broken parts of the gun when they're trying to, you know, fix things, right? You see that all the time in COD. And I think the same thing is going to be true when it comes to Modern Warfare 3. They may look at like, all oh, the sales figures are down. We're not making as much money this year. Well, it has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, they just remastered 16 maps as compared to putting anything original in the game at launch. It has nothing to do with the fact that the game was touted as a DLC and then became a full price game. Has nothing to do with the fact that the campaign was terrible or that for people that haven't played it, zombies is like Warzone zombies, and without even looking into it, that probably turned off a lot of people just hearing it's on the Warzone map. You know, it has nothing to do with all that. They're going to focus in on the multiplayer and say, you know what? We're making less money this year. I think we need to go back to the broken minimap and get rid of Dead Silence. I think that'll set the ship just right. I can see them doing it, man. I can see them doing that because that's what they do. They make like, I have like a complex almost when it comes to Activision. Like, things that seem so simple and easy easy to understand for me it's just not how activision sees things like something will make so much sense to me i'm like this this is perfect like i don't understand why they don't do this they would make them so much money things would be great but then activision just like no absolutely not that would never work we're never gonna do that and i'm like what Wait, why it's like the perfect solution but like they never end up doing it like it just seems like you know activision and like the cod devs like myself and them we're all in like a completely different wavelength and it seems like they're on a different wavelength from the community in general most of the time this year has been a lot better in terms of listening to player feedback but still I'm concerned that with the dwindling player count and then making less money than they anticipated that some bad things are going to happen as a result, whether that's them nickel and diming us a lot more, whether that's them removing events and trying to push people more into the shop, whether that's making fundamental gameplay changes to the game. You know, anything can happen in COD. Maybe I'm just being tinfoil hat right here, but just it's interesting to think about. And I want to make that video here today and get your guys' thoughts and feedback down there in the comments. So, guys, that's pretty much it for the video here today. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I hope you all had a very safe and Merry Christmas. And I hope you're looking forward to the new year as well. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting seeing how we, you know, navigate through the rest of Modern Warfare 3's life cycle. What it's going to be like without Bobby Kotek. What it's going to be like with Microsoft completely taking over. And then definitely what it's going to be like when Black Ops Gulf War starts to get announced and teased. It'll be interesting. And as always, I'll be here with you guys every step of the way thank you all so much for listening and i hope you guys all have a wonderful day